What's up, fellas? Taking a uh, step away from the typical train simulator video, train simulator or trains, as are my norm. <laughs> and I'm gonna jump on the bandwagon a little bit and uh, take a peek at uh, railroads online. Now, this is not a uh, not a new new one for people per se. Railroads Online's been around for a little bit now. I uh, I picked it up the, the day after release. Unfortunately, I was in uh, Colorado whenever uh, the day it released. But uh picked it up the day after release. And uh, I've been fiddling with it on and off now ever since. And for those of you that have been following, you'll know that... Uh, there's a lot of drama that was included, a lot of uh, ridiculousness on initial release, and for the first year or so, it was a pretty rocky start, but uh, seems like, uh, well it seems like the head dev, because there's only one really. Uh, seems like he finally kind of figured some stuff out a little bit. Got on with the uh, Astragon. And uh, they've been pushing some quality updates since then. A lot of, uh, a lot of bug fixes, which thrill me to death. I, Me personally, I'd love to see bug fixes in a game long before I like to see content. I know some people will say, hey, you gotta... You gotta do something to keep the game entertaining and whatever, but I just, if you push out a new game and it's still gonna be an early release or beta or alpha or whatever, I f feel like you should spend a lot of time working out the kinks and the bugs long before you start thinking about, oh, we gotta start pushing content, DLC, whatever. And, uh, since, uh, since uh, they took up with uh, Astragon, they've been doing pretty well with that. Pretty well. So you'll see right now we're in our winter theme. They just uh, they just threw out the winter theme for uh, winter. So uh, everything's white and snowy and cold. My least favorite time of the year. Pretty to look at from in a game. In real life, screw this. Can't stand the snow. I, I've lived in it too many times. I'm a southern boy and I like my heat. But uh yeah, they just changed over from the fall colors. And uh I do kind of like that now and then with their updates they push some new content. So it's cool that they do it this way cuz you know, it kind of goes against my idea, I know, but they uh typically for RO, they uh they toss out Every now and then with their bug fixes and major updates, they'll put in some new content. You know, maybe a new locomotive or a new car or something. With the winter update, they did a handful of bug fixes and we get a snowplow and a cook mogul. Or not a mogul, a consolidation. We already had a mogul. But a uh, consolidation. <laughs> so, uh, it's pretty, pretty cool. It's pretty neat. It's nice to be able to it's nice to be able to keep things fresh, but still spend a lot of time working on bugs and such. Working out the kinks. I, I, I do enjoy that they do that a lot. So, uh, what is Railroads Online? For those of you that are new to my channel, my, vid my videos or whatever, you might have already seen Railroads Online. But, from my perspective, Railroads Online is uh, a multiplayer train game. That's... <laughs> That's more or less how I look at it. I, uh, some would liken it to a train simulator, and you wouldn't entirely be wrong, but you wouldn't entirely be right either. It's not so much a train simulator in, it, in that there's not a huge amount of focus put on the operation of the train itself, or the locomotive. So, in my, in my take on simulate, simulators in and of themselves, you spend a lot of time in a proper simulator you spend a lot of time uh, physically operating the locomotive itself and uh, all aspects of operations so fire water 
throttle, steam regulation, boiler temperature, all that fun stuff. For those of you that have uh, watched my train simulator classic videos, you know what I'm talking about. So a lot of that uh, stuff from Smokebox, that's, that's what I would consider proper simulation in the sense that is that's more of a train simulator that <coughs> railroads online doesn't really capture that I mean throw some wood in the boiler or in the firebox and uh, yeah wait till your uh, boiler temperature goes up and you're good to go that's about it <laughs> there's no no real rhyme or reason to fiddle with the uh fiddle with your reverser there's no rhymer reason to actually needing to use cylinder cocks or your throttle and none of that uh, you can fiddle with all of it which is nice but there's no uh there's no major simulation part of any of that so i wouldn't really consider railroads online a train simulator in that sense i consider it just more of a multiplayer train game I'm sure I'll catch some flack for that, but that's that's just my take. If it's going to be a, if you're looking for the term simulator, you got to really point to the simulation aspects. Now, one thing that Railroads Online does do quite well is their physics. They do spend a lot of time on physics. <laughs> they, I mean, I, I think there's only one guy actually doing the development, but uh, there's a lot of time put into the physics of how trains operate in railroads online and uh, weights and such so all of that actually it doesn't all that does make a difference but I wouldn't entirely say that something necessarily new to the idea of a train simulator so it's uh I don't know I, I do think railroads online does do it a little better than many others as far as the physics go uh, obviously with the uh, railworks for those of you that have been around for that one smokebox is really the only developer to really capture proper uh, physics in uh, in train simulator and then uh, you got trains train Z they they really don't focus much on the uh, the simulation aspect at all. It's it's definitely more of a model train builder setup. It always has been. So uh, you can't really liken it to that. So I will give credit where it's due. Railroads Online is definitely way better with their physics, but the actual function of things it's very basic, very simple, which is nice. If uh, if you're doing a multiplayer train simulator like this, you can't really focus too too much on. Uh, the actual operations especially with a game like this so with railroads online you're kind of thrown into this map this map right here they uh, they haven't added any new maps or anything just this but you're thrown into this map right here at the freight depot and this is where you know life begins you'll be given one single locomotive one single flat car we'll hop over here open my door here you'll be given this little uh, one of these little Betsy locomotives a little, uh, Porter 040 and a flat car a regular just plain Jane flat car and uh, you gotta build your way uh, you gotta build your way to the logging camp so from the freight depot you'll build tracks freight depot to however however you see fit so the goal essentially is to connect all of these industries together to uh, one big railroad and how you do it is entirely up to you so uh, you can hop into your uh, your G menu here and you got different track constructions different uh, Bridges, abundance, embankments, walls, turntables, crossovers, all sorts of... Actually, oh, look at there. While we're here discovering, I added a new crossover, 45 degrees. That's handy. But, uh, track work, essentially. You'll be spending... 
If you're a solo player, you'll be spending a massive majority of your time doing track work for the first really f week or so, depending on how fast you are. I know some people, I don't know how in the heck they do it, but some people, they'll sit here and go for hours on it just track laying, and they'll connect one or two industries a day. I don't know how they do it. I, I, I can't do that. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, you'll spend a lot of your time right off the bat doing track work. That's just how it goes. But, uh, at bare minimum, you got to connect the logging camp at least to the freight depot so you can start making money. So you'll take uh, you'll take your little flat car with your porter up to the logging camp, and uh, brakes. Oh, that's interesting. But uh, take your little flat car up to the logging camp, grab some logs, load them up. There we go. And. Uh, Bring them back down to the freight depot and unload them for some uh, some monies, because you do got to make some money. It's it's a uh, a bit of a mixture of a game. So you got a little bit of a, a little bit of train simulator aspect, a little bit of business uh, business operations aspect. So you do have to make money. You got to pay for uh, pay for all these locomotives and cars, and each new car costs money. So. Uh, you hop into your G menu again. Hop into locomotives. You got flat cars here. They're three hundred dollars. And uh, flat cars with stakes. And cordwood cars, flat cars, gondolas, tank cars, box cars, cabis. A recent addition, the snowplow, which is more or less main its way. Hand cars, and then you got your locomotives. So we got. Two porters, a class 48, Montezuma, Eureka, Glenbrook, a two truck Climax, two truck Heisler, two truck Shea, a Mosca, a Cook 260, a Cook 280, and a Rio Grande 280. So that's what we got as far as content in game right now for uh, motive power, but you have to pay for all that. So you got to make some money. So your first goal really is to, uh, depending on how fast you want to grind out money, I mean, there are other faster, easy ways to make money, but if you want to do it the right and proper way, you got to at bare minimum build a track starting from your freight depot over there all the way up to the logging camp here. And then you got to run back and forth bringing logs to the freight depot and make some money or you can bring the logs to the sawmill back and forth make some money then you can start buying up locomotives and uh, buying up rolling stock as you get to the get to the price point you want to be at so uh... Boink. turn on our compressor here Whoops. there we go This, where we're standing right now, is where you'll make all of your locomotive and rolling stock pur purchases. This is, these three tracks right here, <laughs> this little, uh, little walkway path right there, that's, uh, this is your purchasing yard, I guess one could say. This is where you'll just, you'll pick up anything and everything new, all your new, uh, content. Every time new content comes out, you purchase it, it's going to be here. So, uh, yeah, it's pretty neat. Operation-wise, you can do it the hard way by sitting inside the cab and, you know, fiddling with all the bells and whistles. Most locomotives have throttle, reverser, cylinder cocks, sanders, bell cord, whistle brake of some sort some will have actual steam brakes and some are uh, air brakes some will have uh, some will have just locomotive brakes but brakes and then your fire 
so you will have to take the time to uh, throw wood in the fire to uh, keep your fire up now that is all you have to do that is you do not have to do anything else with this boiler all you gotta do is throw wood in there now you do have water you do have a water level but as far as that goes all you have to do is go up to one of those water towers over there and you know, line up your tender and dump water in it and that's it that's, that's all you have to do so uh, not much to it really it's it's pretty easy to figure out overall not gonna lie this is pretty cool yeah the snowplow is pretty cool this is the first time I'm seeing it I haven't been on this game in a hot minute not since not since uh, they pushed the very first fall update really I uh, I haven't had people to play it with but uh, in my in my opinion this game is played best with people and uh, part of that has to do with just the way it's designed it's it's designed to have friends that's that's railroads online it's not not just the uh, railroads it's, it's railroads online it's meant to be played with people and uh, you can't play it by yourself I mean I I, I did all this alone but uh, you can play it by yourself. It just a it can burn you out really quick playing it by yourself. And by really quick, I mean fast. I these days I do good to do like an hour session at best. Just just because you end up spending most like I said most of your time will be spent working on and improving your track work. You now once you uh, once you're satisfied enough, you know you can spend it spend some time running trains and whatnot but it can be a bit of a headache because you know you do have to take the time stop the train get out switch the track get back in the train start the train again back and forth wherever you want to go so that can be a headache to say the least for a, a solo but you know it is doable so you can play this by yourself I just I don't personally recommend it it's it's definitely meant to have people to play with but there's a lot of little fun gimmicks you can do with the game just for kinda giggles and squiggles you know, we got some market lights here but uh... yeah is this in all honesty the game itself is uh, pretty simple I mean, there's not a whole whole lot to it it uh... It's a little daunting at first, but once you figure it out, once you get the basics down, it's uh, it's really simple. It's really quite simple. I mean, like I said, once you build all your industries, at that point it's just a matter of making enough money to get all the rolling stock or locomotives that you want or fine-tuning your rails or build a new map with tracks going different directions because uh, there is absolutely nothing limiting you to where you place your tracks like at all if you want to build up in these mountains in a weird wonky way switchbacks or whatever you can do it uh, which I mean you will have to figure out if you want to get up to those mines and whatnot you will have to find a way up the mountains this is uh, this is narrow gauge railroading this is geared towards narrow gauge kinda Colorado style narrow gauge uh, I don't know if we'll ever see any other types of narrow gauge other than the more Colorado style narrow gauging so a uh, three foot uh, it'd be nice to see another map somewhere different but it is what it is but uh yeah you, can, you build all up in here however you see fit so you want to start at the freight depot and run the line along these mountains slowly climbing up the mountain you can do just that all the way up to the iron ore the coal mines smelter but you do have to take into account grades like I said physics are one thing that this game has actually got simulated pretty pretty decently they do take a lot of time to uh, simulate the physics so weight makes a big difference 
the way uh, the weight of the locomotive the weight of the cars the weight of your freight the power of your locomotive all of that makes a difference so grades make a difference in that uh, combination as well so you can't just build a vertical line up these mountains you actually have to think through okay I I want to run say that little uh, do 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 say you want to pull a train of oh I don't know five cars up to the iron mine with uh, this little 240 here you actually do have to think out okay I'm gonna need probably no more than a 3% grade up the mountains which means you do, you do apps 100% have to figure out a way to maintain a 3% grade up into these mountains up to the iron ore mine now you you can cheese it a little bit you can just kind of build a straight uh, bridge or uh, lay down an embankment all the way up if that's what floats your boat there's nothing saying you can't do that me personally I like to I like to kind of gear it a little bit more realistic I also uh, realistically you would kind of look through the best uh, best incline up the mountain I should say through the terrain you'd be spending a lot of time uh, surveying walking up these mountains picking out decently flat spots or spots that have a gentle grade that aren't so jagged you do have to think that up going up these mountains if you want to look at if you want to look halfway decent now I, I'll show you in a second what I mean by it. you can 100% cheese it if you want to probably shouldn't go too fast I'll probably sling this uh, sling this plow off the tracks it's pretty cool I've actually not seen a, a plow done properly in game before but uh, you have bridges. You can, uh, if you so please to, as far as going up and down grades, you can just build bridges. You can say, "Screw it, I don't want it to look uh, halfway realistic at all." So you can just build a bridge circles its way up and down. Which, as we get up here, I'll show you exactly what I mean. Because I did just that going down the iron mine. Because uh, I, I can't stand the grade going down the iron mine. It's a, it's a frustrating spot. So, uh, boogie, boogie, boogie. This is popping out of the pass here, coming down the iron mine. Now, if you want to make good use of most of these places, you will absolutely have to connect them. Like, everything. Especially this iron mine. This iron mine has to be connected to the coal mine and the iron mine. But, uh, here's what I meant by, uh, cheesing it, per se. If I wanted to look realistic, halfway... Oh, have some fucking snow. I did say that. It's okay. We're grown men around here. But, <laughs> If I wanted to do it halfway realistically, I'd have gone probably along the side of the mountain there and just kind of wrap my way down gently down the grade, but I did this in one night. I said screw it. So this is what I mean by cheese it. You can 100% just build bridges. You can say screw it. I'm, I'm tired. I'm tired of trying to make this look perfect and pretty. Just, uh, just do a bridge. It's a 3% incline. I believe I did a 3% all the way down, all the way around. Almost in a Georgetown loop style, it just kind of circles under itself. Twice. As you can see. It just, it makes life a lot easier if you're trying to, uh, trying to just kind of hurry it up. Which is exactly what I did. <laughs> but, uh, you can do that. And get away with it. Just fine. And then, uh, you gotta look for 
kind of halfway flat spots so kind of like that you see that right there or that right there would be a good spot for track going up into the mountains right there if that were to float your boat and uh, what else what's another feature of this game you can derail so okay, right now I'm trying to keep a, a halfway decent uh, view on my speed here now there is no speedometer there's no like you're going X mile an hour there's just you know eyeballing it which is pretty much what you had what these guys had to do back in the day you pretty, pretty much eyeballed it back then and uh, if you hit this curve with a long train too fast like say right here you can absolutely sling your train right off the track and then you'll have to take the time to re-rail it all now re-rail is not too hard you just go over here click re-rail and then click on the car or the locomotive or whatever and just re-rail it but you do have to take the time to do it so it makes you uh, makes you think again about your grades and about your curves. It makes you uh, pay attention to your curve uh, radius because if it's too tight and you hit it too fast, you'll sling the whole train off the track. Locomotive designs do make a difference. So if you want to say say you wanted a real steep grade going up to the iron mine. Of, oh, I don't know, 8%. That's one ridiculously steep grade, but it's 8%. You could do it. And you could use a Shea. It would take you all day to get up there. Because Shea's are not fast locomotives, they're geared locomotives. But you can 100% do it. And then if you try to go up that same grade with, let's say, this locomotive right here, you wouldn't get up the grade with half the amount of cars. So, uh, yeah, not a lot to it, not, not too much to it, it's kind of cool and different, cool and different, it's one that I've, uh, I've enjoyed, I've enjoyed watching the development, I've enjoyed fiddling around with it, uh, like I said, it, it is a hard one to maintain, playing by yourself I think with how much emphasis is put on playing this one with people it's really hard to enjoy playing it alone so I, I do recommend finding a couple of guys that are maybe interested in uh, fiddling with trains and then going from there but if uh, if solos your solos your uh, your thing then yeah you can absolutely play it solo I uh, I used to have people that played it, but uh, like I said, I, there was some drama whenever uh, Railroads Online first kind of kicked off, and uh, some of the guys I played with, they, they pretty much gave up on the game. But uh, and I can see why. For those of you that have been around for a little bit, you'll also know that there was a previous game to Railroads Online. Uh, and uh, some promises were made and not kept with it. And this game was pushed out instead. And it, it looked a whole lot like uh, promises were made and were about to not be kept. So, uh, it was a lot. It was a rocky start, but it looks like they've, uh, they've pretty much gotten it together. And it's developing into a pretty, pretty neat game, especially for multiplayer. It's, uh, it's really cool in that aspect, finally a multiplayer train game that relies very heavily on that multiplayer you know somebody throwing switches somebody running the train somebody building track you know you can you can have a pretty decently large amount of friends on one server makes for a real fun uh, real fun uh, relaxing gameplay even if you're not necessarily huge on trains, it's, it's real fun to play with friends, just to kind of step back. You know, no, uh, no shooters, no, uh, no wild campaigns and whatnot. Just, uh, just kind of a relaxing run trains, freight one point to the other. 
Like right now it's winter, you can have somebody running around with a porter and this, uh, this snowplow shoving the snowplow around the lines. Spirit giggles and squiggles. All that going on. You can design your whole railroad around it. Uh, yeah. Well, it's, it's not a... Not much else I can say to it. It's, it's not a... Not a whole... Whole lot to it right now. It's... Uh, it's, uh, it's still in development. There's still a lot of features that are planned. There's still a lot of additions, content, buildings, uh, industries. I know uh, we've seen the hint of a cattle car. Or I guess uh, one could call it a stock car. I've seen the hint of a stock car soon, so I imagine we'll probably be seeing a new industry. I'm hoping a new map sometime in the near future. Hey, <laughs> wink, wink. I know a, a huge majority of the community have been begging for a new map. There is a program where you can move the industries around, but it's not uh, it's not the easiest program to manipulate. You have to uh, know the latitude and longitude of where each industry is and how it's rotated, and then you have to know the latitude and longitude of where you want to move said industry. Which is not the easiest on a for people that aren't the best at reading maps. So, uh, but you can move, you can use a program online to uh, move these industries around, kind of mix things up a little bit on the map, but kind of with the community there on the hope that we see a new map soon. But it's, it's a real neat one. It's a neat one, especially if I want to step back and just uh, just kind of run trains without the aspect of simulation, but have some uh, kind of a more first-person view that one doesn't really get with trains. But it's laughably easier to operate than, say, railworks. So, uh, yeah. It's my take on Railroads Online. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, check it out. It is in the Steam store. Uh, shoot, even hit me up if you uh, if you pick it up and are uh, looking for a play session. It's, it's, a, it's, a pretty, it's a pretty neat game. I will give it that. It is pretty neat overall. It is. It's a lot of. It's a lot of fun with people. It, it it's got hours of entertainment. A lot of a lot of entertainment can be had, and you know, no two railroads are ever alike. Everybody will build their build their routes differently up and down, up and down the mountains. So, uh, hope you guys enjoyed it, and I will see you next time.